all right we are going to discuss about the development of cardiovascular system and this video is prepared for the second round of elsevier here is the overview of the development of the heart and this is the timeline these are the weeks and first of all there is development of cardiogenic areas in the epiblast then there is formation of heart tubes there is lateral folding and heart starts looping there is subtations and finally the development of vasculature of the heart this is very basic bilaminar chum disc here is the epiblast and this is the procaudal plate and this is the developing primitive streak here is the primitive node which is also called blastopore or Hansen's node as the epiblast give rise to mesoderm as well as endoderm initially the cardiogenic precursors are located in the epiblast itself later on they migrate from the primitive streak and reaches the mesoderm so these are the cardiogenic area they are migrating we have removed epiblast they reach the mesoderm and now after reaching the mesoderm they would migrate cranially and achieve their proper position this is the migration of cardiogenic areas next we are going to see about how the heart is assuming its proper anatomical position this is the trilaminal jump disc with ectoderm mesoderm as well as endoderm amniotic cavity and yolk sac if we have a section like this you can see the mesoderm now this mesoderm on the lateral plate mesoderm there is developing intraembryonic coelom which is the future pericardial cavity and which divides the trilaminal jump disc the lateral plate mesoderm into two layer one which is near to the endoderm called the splanchnic layer of the mesoderm and one which is near to the ectoderm which is called the somatic layer of the mesoderm here are the heart tubes you can notice before lateral foldings the pericardial future pericardial cavity is located above the heart tubes now the folding of the embryo begins and these are the dorsal aorta developing the heart tube comes to comes near to the each other via the lateral folding and starts fusing now we can see the pericardial cavity is below the heart tubes heart tubes are developed by the proliferation of the certain lump of the cell these are called angioplast cells and these later undergo the apoptosis and they canalize and inside there there is presence of hematocytoblast cells these are the hematocytoblast cells which are the future blood cells now if you have this is the section of the embryo like this is a neural tube notochord gut these planchnic layer of the mesoderm and this is the somatic layer this is the pericardial cavity and here are the heart tubes and these heart tubes are attached to the back side by the dorsal mesocardium later on this dorsal mesocardium degenerates and formed what is called as a transverse sinus this is how by the lateral folding heart assumes its proper anatomical position this is the differentiating heart tube when it is fused from craniocaudal direction these are the truncus arteriosus bulbus cordis ventricle atrium and sinus venosus and the right horn of the sinus venosus get absorbed in the atrium and forms the smooth part of the atrium right atrium now the heart starts looping and this is first of all the ventricles are located above the atria so first of all when the heart start looping it is actually the force from the dorsal mesocardium and which lets the heart to loop uh, first of all the c-shaped and then there is a looping which is s-shaped and gradually there is decreasing distance between the outflow and the inflow tract of the heart these are the ventricles now after the looping of the heart this these are the real embryos here you can see the c-shaped fold and s-shaped fold of the embryo these are the ventricles then there is septation of the heart begins this is the lateral view of the heart these are the atria these are the ventricle and this is the outflow tract these are the ventral and dorsal endocardial cushions 
with the help of several cytokines and growth factors this grows towards the each other and formed fused atrioventricular septum after the fusion of endocardial cushion if you view the heart from the front side this is the fused endocardial cushion these are the atria these are the ventricles this is septum spurium and there is development of atrial septum and ventricular septum about the atrial septum first of all septum primum is formed which leaves foramen primum and before the closure of foramen primum there is development of another foramen which is called foramen secundum to maintain the shunting of the blood at the same time ventricular septum the muscular part of the ventricular septum is growing and in the atrial septum at the same time septum secundum is forming and along with that the trabeculation of the ventricle has begun now the ventricular septum is formed from the three parts one part is muscular part of the ventricular septum and the uh, second part is formed by the migration of the neural crest cell and third part is derived from the fused endocardial cushion this is the septum secundum of the atrial septum and this remaining part of the septum primum maintains uh, and acts as a valve so that the shunting of blood is maintained and this is the foramen ovale which is later closed this is about the development of the outflow tract of the heart and this is done by the migration of the neural crest cell they form the mesenchyme and they form the spiral septum of the heart so this is formation of spiral septum the pulmonary artery grows above the aorta once again if you see this is the spiral septum which is derived from the mesenchyme of the neural crest cell next is the development of cardiac conduction system these are nothing but specialized myocardial cells which have achieved their function for their permeability for calcium and sodium channels this is the s node av node and these are the bundle branches and moderator band and here is the development of cardiac conduction system here we end the development of cardiac uh, embryology and thank you